grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and risen Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word for today is that first verse from our reading from Acts chapter 5 verse 29. After having been arrested and gathered and called to answer for speaking the gospel, that verse says this. Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than men. This is our text. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that this day you are our peace. You are the one who has come and reconciled us to the Heavenly Father. You have satisfied the payment for our sins and you have continued to send us your Holy Spirit that we might be guided and directed by you and by your word. I pray that now through the hearing and preaching of your word, we might rest in the peace that you give and move in the guidance and by the strength that you provide. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I suppose as I begin, it's very fitting for me to wish you and celebrate a happy Mother's Day. Motherhood is not an easy thing. I don't need to tell some of you that. Um, Typically, Mothers are responsible for the the front line uh, and even more closely than almost anybody else in a child's world are responsible for their care, their nurture, their safety, for almost anything good that's going to happen for a kid. When when our school was in session, more than a couple days, I would gather at our lower entrance where parents, quite often mothers, are walking their kids into school. Now, Especially on some days, you see very interesting things there at that doorway. You can tell when kids and families have had a rough morning. There are a few times where you see a kid carrying a stuffed animal with them and clutching it, one that should have been left at home, and the moms are like, oh, I know. Uh, You occasionally see days where the, the girl is wearing the princess dress over her clothes, and the mom is like, hey, you gotta pick your battles. Or the boy's wearing a cape, and the reasoning is the same. But that line becomes, well, a a thing that we all understand. When you're an authority, when you're taking care of others, these little self-willed creatures, you got to pick your battles. And that probably continues even when you're raising kids up to their teen years. Pick your battles more than a couple wise parents have said. I share with you that kind of perspective because our reading for today has that sort of pick your battles mentality. So you start there and you have this scene where you have the Sanhedrin and they're in charge of the apostles who are going out of bounds according to what the Sanhedrin wants for them. The apostles, after the day of Pentecost, they have been gathering in the temple. They've been preaching the name of Jesus. They've been saying the the authorities put him to death, but Jesus rose from the dead. Those who are in power in those days text even says it, they're filled with jealousy because people are listening to the apostles in the courts. And so they have them arrested. They say, we're going to keep you here. Don't speak in this name, but God sets them free. And then they go back to the scene of, scene of the supposed crime. And as they're arrested, all of a sudden the Sanhedrin's going, what are we supposed to do with these guys? And one of the Pharisees says what we had written in our text. He says, Leave these men alone. Let them go. If their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop them. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. Pick your battles. Because nobody wants to find themselves fighting against or somehow trying to oppose God. Now, what you have are any number of authority issues and questions in our text. There's an authority thing going on there, and maybe the easiest way to get to at that is to think in terms of like, like parent and child, right? So as a parent, I or any number of you might have told your kids, might be telling them now, um, finish your vegetables, uh, clean your room, change your clothes, uh, be home by eight, And you expect it to happen. Why? Because it's your good and gracious authority that you want to give to the kids. And it's to their good, to their benefit to listen. Now imagine you do any of that and your kid looks back at you and says, thank you for your opinion or I will take that under advisement. 
It's the kind of thing that, that almost makes your head explode as a parent, right? You're like, you will take it under advisement? What in the, who do you think you are? Excuse me? It, authority continues on many levels. You can imagine a, a cop pulling you over, the, the flashing lights. Can you imagine telling him, hey, sorry, officer, now is really not a good time for me. I got to go. Or, or as you're, what, continuing to do your taxes, let's say you have an extension, Oh, an auditor comes and he lays out the paperwork and you can look at it and say, yeah, okay, I, um, I see where you're going with this, but uh, money's a little tight right now. I'm afraid no can do. Right, you want to go that, at that time when you are under authority, a neutral response that takes no action, a neutral response is not Neutral. And if that's true with this world's authorities, you can only imagine what that means when you look at yourself as a child under the authority of your God. Let me tell you this very clearly from God's word here today. Where God is leading, where he has spoken, where he is directing you, not going or doing where God is clearly directing is, in the words of our text, it is fighting against God. It's no longer a matter of preference. That's an issue of resistance. It's not an issue of, ah, I'm not really comfortable with that. That is defiance. And the result that you even see among the characters in our text, the result of fighting against God, of being stuck where you are instead of where he would have you go, the result is unpeace. There's two groups in our text, right? There's the apostles, and then there's the Sanhedrin. The apostles, they look like they have nothing going for them. They are those who um, ha- are poor, they've been imprisoned, they're about to be flogged. You don't want to necessarily be in that camp by almost any of this world's measurables. You're like, ugh, that's not good. On the other hand, you have the Sanhedrin. Those are those who are in power, they have wealth, they have command, they have control. But of those two groups, Only one of them has peace. The other group, the Sanhedrin, well, when you have authority issues with God or with any authority God has given to you, it looks a lot like blame. It looks a lot like no self-examination. It looks a lot like trying to control everything else. And so the text invites us to ask this question pretty directly. Are you harboring any spiritual rebellion in your life? Are there areas where you are out of alignment with a prince of peace and the cost in your life is the cost of unpeace? Because God's not your advisor. You don't kind of go, Lord, I hear what you say. Those are interesting thoughts. And if there's a sin issue that you are not addressing in your life, it always comes at tremendous cost. Again, it's... I'm aware of the context that today you're probably gathering and doing this worship on Mother's Day. And as any pastor will tell you, it's, it's not like a holiday in the church year. But make no mistake, any pastors that's been doing it for a while will tell you it's kind of a holy day in the church year because people tend to gather for worship. Moms do a lot of guiding their people to live under the authority of God. Now, I realize this, and it's worth saying, moms aren't perfect according to God's perfect design, there's a a sacrificial love on behalf of a mother and there's joyful obedience on behalf of kids. There's plenty of rooms, uh, room for things to go wrong on both of those things. But where it happens well, where there is a joyful sacrifice that a mom provides in serving the family, where children joyfully submit, there is something beautiful, even holy about that because it's an echo of how our God works among us. We have this echo of loving sacrifice, and we get to see Jesus Christ. We get to see that he humbles himself, and he becomes human. We get to see that as a human, he humbles himself and submits to this world's authorities. We get to see that he sacrifices himself by even laying his life down. 
When we read from the uh, book of Ephesians, in a world where there is so much unpeace because we are bucking against every authority, even to the point where we are bucking up against the authority that comes from God, the book of Ephesians announces this, Christ who has become a sacrifice, Christ himself is our peace. And as he gives up himself, he continues to give his good gifts. Our text says it like this. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins to his people. We understand what it means to be given forgiveness of sins. But according to our fallenness, we even need the gift of repentance. And I'm pretty sure in God's word, that is where he's continually guiding and directing us. That we would rest in his gifts, that we would rest in repentance, that we would rest in his peace. And so our prayer from God's word today probably sounds something like this. Okay, Lord, I'm tired of fighting. Give me repentance. Give me a peace that's bigger than this world's circumstances. Give me joyful obedience and then God will continue to direct you by his word, by his spirit at work in you. Say, okay, Lord, I'll follow you. I will, I will love my spouse. I will follow the direction of my boss. I will help my friend. I will be kind to my neighbor. I will be kind even to my enemy. And there you're moved by something bigger than you. You're anchored in the grace of our God, moved by the power of his Holy Spirit in a way that God would grant you peace. God's peace be with you now and always. Amen.